Hey everyone, thank you for joining me on this virtual walkabout. Um, I'm going to jump straight into it on this piece, which is called A Stairway to Heaven. Um, the name of this piece really comes from a reference to a book, which is called The Wizard of the Crow. Um, this book is by a Kenyan author called Ngugi wa Thiongo. And um, yeah, it's quite an interesting book. Um, it's quite a long read as well. Um, but it's really about a fictional leader who is, you know, only known as the ruler. And it's also in a sort of fictional republic as well, but based in Africa, on the continent of Africa. Um, it's very tongue-in-cheek. Um, it's a very entertaining, but quite a long read. And so I think, yeah, part of, part of what inspired me to create this, this work was really also the Western view um, of the African dictator, you know, this archetype which we see regurgitated over and over in, in Hollywood movies. Um, so when I was working on this character, um, I wanted to make him have quite a funny facial features. Um, I really wanted to sort of put him in like the lighter sense um, just as an entry point for the audience um, but at the same time as you start digging deeper it opens up other information um, on the top left hand corner um, over here I'll just zoom in on that a little bit we've got the words here Rofo Roro fight and um, what I like to do with some of the work is very often there's certain words that will jump out to me, but then I rearrange them or I change a letter in the word um, just for my own entertainment. And this word actually comes from Rofo Rofo Fight, which is the name of an album by the late Nigerian um, artist Fela Kuti. Um, and the meaning of this really is, or the description of, of this Rofo Rofo fight is a political battle um, in which no participants is unsullied. So it's a bit of a mud slinging contest. Um, I think the first, the, the, the word itself um, is a duplicate. So Rofo in Yoruba uh, actually means mud. So it's kind of like a mud fight. Um, and I just like the way that, you know, it sounds on the tongue. Um, and so I just put it onto the canvas. Below that, in um, there is some words again, which is a rat trapped in a council flat. Um, and this is some words that I heard at a theater play. Um, it's one of the lines of one of the characters. Um, and it just kind of stood out for me and, and so a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm pretty much recording sounds, words, sentences, somebody says something, I often just record that or you know I'll write it down or I'll try and remember it in my head and then later on I'll put it down onto the canvas. Uh, below uh, that in this area over here is uh, like a little grid with colors on it and it says RGB we've got the numbers two five two five 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 and we've got the word ache um, ache and this is also a visual representation of one of um, the themes found in the book wizard of the crow um, it's referred to as white ache and so what these numbers here really refer to is um, the RGB color gamut um, and the RGB color gamut is what is used to um, display color in a digital space and me coming from a advertising and digital background I was quite often I'm faced like, with uh, color pantones in for print or um, for digital media and so um, I like the idea of putting a very simple um, word or or description into sort of like a little puzzle 
Um, and so what this really is talking about is white ache and, and, and the way white ache is explained um, in the book is really about this aspiration to, to whiteness, you know, um, where one acts in a certain way or one talks in a certain way as well um, to assimilate whiteness. And so in the first about, I think about 200 pages of Wizard of the Crow, you know, um, the author really brings home this idea of white ache, which is, you know, this uh, delusional disease that has taken over the mind and body of the ruler, and um, as well as the rest of the country. And this disease results in the ruler and his ministry, his ministry's obsession with what if. What if I could have a tower built that reaches the heavens? Um, what if, you know, building a staircase that could reach the heavens, um, I'll be recognized globally as uh, in the United States and other countries of white majority. And uh, this, this, the white egg is, is a disease of really of desire and of wealth and of power. And this fills the ruler with anger because outside of his country, he does not matter at all. Um, we see this in the beginning of the book when he visits America and he's hit with the reality check that whiteness seems to rule everything in this world and he is given little to no attention um, at all. All right, and so moving on. Um... Yeah, let's move to this side over here. We've got a gun. Um, this was really taken out of one of my um, comic books as a kid. Um, I mean, you know, it's this sort of novelty gun that's got the flag inside that has the word bang written on it. I placed it there. It's this idea of, I think, especially um, growing up as a young boy in Cape Town, um, and I'm sure globally as well, you are often given toys to play with, um, toy guns especially. Um, but for some, for someone growing up in in Cape Town, um, I felt that you know being so close to to having gangsterism in my neighborhood, uh, what happens is you end up playing sort of these play gang fights where you are from one gang and your friends or maybe from an opposing gang and I mean this is when you're like really young but I mean you're already sort of you know playing this games of uh, this power struggle that's happening um, so I just, I just found that quite interesting and I thought I'd I'd add the, the, the gun in there um, moving down over here we've got a yeah we've got the words here which firstly is Pecunia and second word is potentia um, and these words um, are really uh, you know money and power um, and they sit above the head of the sculpture which is um, the Venus the Milo um, and of course we know the sculpture is um, you know the Venus the Milo um, was said to depict the Greek goddess um, Aphrodite and as a child, I was very much into Greek mythology. And you see this work, um, references to Greek mythology appears quite a lot um, in the works as well. Um, and Aphrodite is the goddess, I think, of love and beauty. So I use the statue um, as a symbol, you know, to sort of show, you know, the impossible beauty standards that are portrayed in the media um, but at the same time I add the skeletal structure to sort of bring out the humanness um, and on the shoulders on each shoulder is the word mom and dad and I took this off a, uh, a tattoo um, or an image of, of, of tattoos found on South African prisoners um, where it's got mom on one shoulder and dad on the other um, and then I scroll over here to the, to the right hand side we've got the words TWISM and that actually stands for or would be an acronym TWISM um, 
And Twism is really, um, I saw it on a music video when I was growing up, and I think it was uh, the basketball player Shaquille O'Neal when he um, decided to to try his hand at um, at rapping, and um, did this big globe. I just remember there was this big earth globe and around it the words are wrapped around it and it says twism and the acronym stands for the world is mine and um i thought it was quite fitting it's something that just popped into my head while i was busy um reading the book um wizard of the crow um because i thought it was quite fitting for this idea of you know a dictator wanting to own the world um yeah below that we've got peanut and palm oil and this reference is sort of modern day slavery um, in the um, and there's been an ongoing debate about this it's a documentary that I was watching also while I was busy painting this so what you often need to understand with the work is that it's not it's not linear um, a lot of the pieces um, that I paint some words or some visuals will relate or link to a previous painting or painting that will come after this painting in another series so they're all linked together in one way or the other it's not linear at all um, so it might not make sense on this painting to have certain words here but it's not about it making sense at all um, it's how I feel fit in putting the words there okay and uh, let me just zoom out a little bit okay uh, yeah this line over here history belongs to the victors um, there's something that I also just got of some source material on the internet. I like, I just like that line. Um, and so what it what it really talks to is, you know, after colonization uh, takes place um, in a country, and you know the people are colonized, um, their history is pretty much erased. Um, whatever has come before pre-colonization, most of the time does not exist um, anymore. It is rewritten with the history of the colonizers um, they will give their depiction and their version of what was there and so we see this appear quite often when people talk about nothing was in Africa before the colonizers arrived or it was just these these uh, mud huts that existed only in Africa um, and once you start digging and doing the research um, the truth is is, is very, it's very far from um, from the history that was told by the colonizers and finally we've got some text over here um, and in the corner here as well and this information I most likely won't reveal at this point uh, including the cylinder over here this actually links to a painting um, a future painting um, and if I do do a video um, breakdown or a uh, sorry a digital um, breakdown of that particular work I will link it most definitely to this piece um, so that it kind of opens up but for now this area over here and this area over here are Easter eggs and I will keep them secret um, so thanks so much for checking out uh, this work